Deep Space Nine tackles the issue of metaphysics and telepathy. And uh, Cisco builds a clock. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with your stars, Aaron Eisenberg and Sirach Lofton. Look at them, Sirach is looking awesome. My name is Ryan T. Aaron is too. I'm wow, Ryan. wow, thanks. Uh, this is The Seventh Rule. <laughs> We're going to cover Dramatis Personae, directed by Cliff Bowl. But first, before we get into any of that, we want to uh, hear something from Aaron. Aaron, what about JJ? Oh, yeah. What was it that I want to talk about? You know, I bet I'm going to say the same thing on our next show as well. I'm going to make several predictions about our next show that's coming up. Um, so we have an artist that did the artwork for our show, The Seventh Rules. You can see Ryan, the Ryan Husk poster behind him. It's actually based on a uh, postcard social media piece. Um, he looks like a superhero in that one. Um, and uh, his name is, the artist is J.J. Lendl. Here's another piece of his artwork that he Whoa. did. Very, um, art, what was it, RK um, Radio? Was RKO? R RKO, that's it. RKO, RKO yeah. Randy K. Orton. Very, very uh, a, a great style. We have posters. We have a, a lot of wonderful things to offer on Teespring. Merchandising. So anyway, I want to give a shout out to our, our wonderful artist, JJ Lendl. Please visit his website at jjlendl.com. That's www.jjlendl.com. Amazing artist. He's got a lot of great stuff on his website. It's X Files, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, other Star Wars and Star Trek uh, artwork. It's, he's just a great, a great guy and a great artist. So. Oh, and uh, jumping on that, uh, a lot of his art is available on uh, merchandise, t-shirts, mugs, socks, things like that, of The Seventh Rule at our Teespring uh, online store. That's teespring.com slash The Seventh Rule, or just click in the description box below. Actually, it's kind of like angled right there, below. Um, and uh, check out all of our goodies that we've got. Lastly, Sirach, we were Wait, talking... Wait, what? I, were, weren't you going to let Sirach tell about his, his hat? Um sell a uh, uh, website he's got a whole bunch of different hats that he <laughs> <laughs> i do not i do not mm. no but we did want to hear about your uh your jersey and where that comes from because there's an extra e at the end of the nba there oh yeah this is a vintage clippers jersey circa i don't know 2013 <laughs> probably circa 2009 it's been circa. a while so I got a chance to play in this NBA Entertainment League, which is this league started by the NBA for entertainers. And uh, I got involved with it through uh, my basketball friends, Dwayne Martin specifically. And um, I got a chance to play with a lot of uh, people that I watch on TV and films, guys like Adam oh. Sandler, guys like Will Ferrell, Ice Cube was in the league. Michael um, Chiklis there? Night, Michael Chiklis did not show up. He was but, in a professional bowling league. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I did go to the championship. Brian's best joke. <laughs> you, loved it. Loved it. you loved it. You loved it. Low bar. No, but that sounds like a lot of awesome people. And you guys did really well. Your team did, right? This team went to the finals. We lost in the finals. We played at UCLA. And, uh, you know, actually the year I was – playing on this team because I actually have uh, every year they switch up the team that you play for. Mm -hmm. And one year I got a chance to play for the Lakers uh, just by, you know, the random draw of it. But long story short, the year I was playing on this team, the Clippers, uh, I broke Leonardo DiCaprio's foot <laughs> by accident. Out of anger. <laughs> Completely by accident. And I forgot he what said Star Trek instead of Star Trek. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He said he loves Nog more than Jake. <laughs> no, no, he he didn't say anything. We were just playing, and you know, it was it was really fun to have him there because he wasn't always showing up to play at the games. But didn't make it to the practices. What a punk! Uh, no, but he decided to play that day, and uh, I was on the court against him, and he jumped up to get a rebound, landed on my foot, uh, and just snapped his ankle about as hard as you could. Oh. So they called the ambulance, pulled him out on a stretcher. It was terrible. Wow. Wow. It was so terrible. I'm just you picturing are... you going, I didn't yeah. do anything. I swear. I I, he landed on my foot. And uh, so I felt so bad about it. Um, they stopped production on the, the film he was doing at the time. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
it literally, literally stopped production. And uh, I remember seeing him after that uh, at a restaurant that my <laughs> girlfriend was working at. And she said, uh, Leonard, uh, Leo's there with Giselle. And I'm like, where? She said, in the back, in the booth over there. I said, I got to go say he's sorry. Because <laughs> he, he rolled out on a stretcher. I didn't have the chance to talk to him, really. So, and when you uh, got there, you saw Sylvester Stallone. No, wait, it wasn't Sylvester. It was Mike Tyson was there with him, right? Oh, yeah. It was like, <laughs> and you're like, I, I'm not welcome now, in this room. Starting no, to see I, a pattern I, here with you. No, 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 no. I didn't know. There was nothing there. He was totally cool about it. Uh, and actually, I think I was looking at Giselle so much that I might have offended him. But uh, it was pretty amazing. It was pretty, pretty fun that times. That is the really funny. That yeah. is why you have been blacklisted. Well, I'm going to help you. Get <laughs> I get it now. First is yes. Mike well, Tyson. It. Now it's now, uh, now it's Leonardo uh, DiCaprio. He's uh, gone everywhere. Don't hire that guy from Star Trek. Do not hire. <laughs> and they said the short guy? No, the tall guy. The, the Do tall not guy. hire him. Yeah. You know, right now, for the for the three or four NBA fans in our entire audience, yeah, yeah, we know that rule. It's called the landing space rule, right? The shooter's landing space that's been implemented. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And no, there is he wasn't. He for that? Well, yeah. there is a rule for that, but he he wasn't shooting. I we were both getting a rebound. And oh, he, I see. So it wasn't yeah, we were, like it wasn't like James Harden throwing his feet out at you. No, no, it wasn't like that. No, and it wasn't like me like Zsa Zsa Pachulia trying to run under. You were the original Zsa Zsa. Say Zsa Zsa Gabor. I thought Zsa Zsa Gabor was on the team. There's like, another Zsa Zsa. <laughs> interestingly enough, <laughs> you would think there's Zsa Zsa only one. Gabor would be on my. No, team. the other Zsa Zsa Pachulia. <laughs> Hmm. We would, so, we would, we would have all the, all the, all the, we would have. Uh, oh, never mind. It'll take too long to say that joke. But <laughs> that's are you my sure favorite that's thing. Not NB Aaron. Aaron Eisenberg on your shirt? I think it's NB Aaron Eisenberg. Uh, no, that's exactly. Yeah, NB oh, yeah, you know what? Aaron Eisenberg. It could be. It could be. See, NB Aaron Eisenberg League. Yes. Yes. Five two and under. We got to figure out what NB stands for. <laughs> No ballers. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan is on fire. Oh, today. you're on fire on today. Fire. No, that's not. Uh, so the the hoop is like five feet lower, you know, to help everybody help us out. He's still on fire. He's come on, give him <laughs> give him a break. Oh man. So yeah, that's that's the the story behind this jersey. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. I liked it. That was a good story. No ballers, Aaron Eisenberg. <laughs> <laughs> Have to be five uh, two or under to participate. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I actually had fun six. in that league. I won a championship with the Lakers, and that was like the highlight of my basketball career. So, oh really? I, I yeah. So I I did get to live out a dream, um, just by being in that league. So I'm really thankful for that. Thanks. Shout out to the NBA for developing that league and and giving us a chance to mingle with each other and and a lot of us got to play basketball with each other and make friends so did i it really end? did that or it it did end yeah oh it did end shooting guard right shooting it guard. End, did it end when leonardo dicaprio broke his ankle no that didn't end it ironically <laughs> no that wasn't the thing uh and I, i'd rather not get into what ended it oh, okay. because it's oh, kind nuts. it's it's kind of a little uh, Hollywood po politics of it, um, but but the NBA pulled the plug on it. It went on to become just the E League, which is the oh, Entertainment League, yes. and I think it's still going on. As a matter of fact, I think Chris Brown and a couple other people play in it. But mm -hmm. um, it was a lot more fun when it was the NBA League because sure. of the affiliation and all the legit uh, merchandise that came with it. And Sirak, you said you're you're shooting guard, yeah? A shooting guard, yeah. I usually uh, yeah. play center. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Usually. They score a lot. The other team scores a lot, but that's where I, that's where I, I do my best work is. Nice. Right <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm a shooting guard, six, three, six, four. I could play point two mm -hmm. and I could play forward, but um, it depends on how tall, tall the other guys are on the team. You know what I mean? Yep. I've played with really big guys and, and I have to play point guard and then I play with smaller guys and I'm the center. So it depends. So for those of you Except when you home, play with me, I'm the center. Oh. Yeah. yeah, except for, for when we're together. That are still, that are still <laughs> watching and listening, we're going to talk about Star Trek now. Yes, let's get to Star Trek. <laughs> All right, let's Although get to it. this was, it's fun, it's fun uh, shooting the Trek. It's fun shooting the Trek. Yeah, so Cliff Bowl, you guys have any, uh, 
Not at all. Memories of Cliff Bowl, the director, or maybe Bole. That's true. I don't think it is Bole, though. But no, I don't actually. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel a little guilty. I don't have a lot of memories about a lot of directors and what it was like working with them, except for a few of them. Les Landau, obviously, Mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. Um, Well, they they had notes to to avoid you, so that was why you didn't really have too much. Oh, I understand. Thank you. See, I didn't know that, so now I don't feel bad. I used to feel bad my whole life. I felt bad that I didn't remember everybody. I remember uh, Alan Croker. But but you and uh, I weren't in this episode. So, I mean, it, you know, it would be hard to remember Chris, who wasn't like... And a lot of times we had reoccurring directors. So yes, guys like did. David Livingston would come a lot, you know. And, and I... Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, so, and so we had a lot of uh, recurring directors. And that's why you got to know other guys more than others. Correct. Uh, but with this guy, uh, Mole... Cliff Bowl. Bowl. Cliff Bowl. Cliff Bowl. Yeah. I don't, I don't recall too Order, much interaction with I him. Thought, I thought I did do an episode with him, though. Um, I'll, I'll check it out. Oh, I was you gonna guys look tell too. us what you think of the episode while I, I look at this. Dramatis Personae. Mm-hmm. He did seven DS9 episodes. Uh, this one was his first, although he did 25 TNG episodes. Um, oh, he passed away in February uh, 2014. He was 76 when he passed away. Uh, he also did 10 Voyager episodes. He did <clears throat> Facets. That's where I worked with him. I did. I remember working on Facets. I um, uh, wasn't in Facets. Uh, season, oh. looks like. Yeah, and so there was, he did uh, this one, Dramatis Personae. I hope I'm saying that right. Cardassians, uh, The Collaborator, Equilibrium, Defiant, Explorers, and Facets. So this will be the first one we review that he wow. shot. Wow. That so he, 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 he did Defiant. Uh huh. Yes. That's cool. Why? Yeah, Why I, I only say cool? I say that because of the piece of artwork that I I did, and I told you there's a message encoded in it, and uh, I took titles of different scripts and made mm. a a sentence, and the sentence was uh, the Forsaken duet progress far beyond the stars, Defiant for the cause. And those are all titles of episodes, right? Right. And I, I was explaining my relationship with Avery. So I, I guess we are the Forsaken Duet, progressing far beyond the stars, defiant mm. for the cause. You see? Right. And, and so I only say that defiant is one of the titles that I used for my sentence. And now that I know that Cliff Bowl had a part of it, you mm. know, it's, it's just that much more. Uh, connected to it yeah sure that's cool and very quickly for uh for the the fans of next generation out there a couple episodes of note he did and do and duet is actually one of the uh episodes we just uh we're we're going to be watching talk about we're right yeah sure i have a couple predictions for that episode well let's let's say what uh mr bull did real quick first before you get too (laughs) crazy there listen to some of these episodes that he did um he did uh, The Ensigns of Command, which is a great one. He did The Best of Both Worlds, Parts 1 and 2. That's, you know, one of the best two-parters in the history of Star Trek, certainly in Next Generation. Remember Me, which is a Beverly Crusher-centric episode. I Personally, I think it's the best Beverly Crusher episode. Uh, he did First Contact, which was written by a previous guest of ours, Mr. Mark Zickrey. Mm-hmm. And, and Mark uh, just had a birthday. Yeah, he did. And he also Happy did the, birthday to Mark. Happy birthday, Mr. Mark Zickrey. He also did The Perfect Mate, uh, starring Famke Jansen, and Starship Minds, another great one. Anyway, about 25 of those, but those are the, the noteworthy ones, I'd say. Hmm. Those are Next Generation episodes. Mm-hmm. When are uh, we going to get to Next Generation? <laughs> uh, very shortly. We only have six more seasons of... Uh, <laughs> no, we're almost there. We're almost there. We're in our 80s. <laughs> yeah. So, I like um, that original series. <laughs> I don't even remember DS9. You gotta go back Let's, and rewatch uh, it. I'd like to before we episode. Oh, can before I, we can I, Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to somebody. One of our patrons had a birthday and she was kind of or her girlfriend was kind enough to get a cameo shout out from me. And I um and I think it was last week, it might have been the week before. Her name is Bella mayweather and i wanted to give her a, a shout out on our show to say happy birthday nice to you. happy um, birthday so, uh she's very very nice she's a, a big fan of our show as well as ds9 itself and a big star trek fan so 
I just want to give a, I said I would do awesome. this. So awesome. I forgot our last episode uh, to do that. So I want to make sure I did on this one. Fantastic. Cool. Okay. Cool. So uh, this episode, cool. yeah, this episode, um, what do you think about it? <laughs> well, Cliff Ball. Also, oh, let's, let's back to Cliff Ball. Uh, you guys are so mean. You yeah, know, you know what? Uh, oh my God. Have. You guys, you guys, I'm sorry. I have to, I have to stop you here. I okay. just looked at what Cliff Ball directed the, the 10 episodes. he directed. Caligula? Voyager. Oh. One of them is an episode that is notorious in the lore of Voyager. The episode is called Tuvix. That's right. Cliff Bowl directed the episode called Tuvix. Is that a really um, bad one? And a few others. Uh, but that's the one that really jumps out at me. Tuvix was a pretty uh, peculiar character. He was like a mix between Tuvok and Neelix. They got like mm. combined in a transporter <laughs> accident. Oh, that's funny. It's like this hideous monster. Like they, they, they <laughs> all this weird makeup. Like, and he was like, like weird. Pizza the Hut? Yeah, it was like, yeah. Two weeks. Anyway, so. So, so it's a good out. episode though, right? <laughs> I don't think it's a good episode. It's, it's, it's an it's episode. An episode. <laughs> it's an episode. Okay. And it is very well known. And the Star Trek groups have Tuvix's picture as a meme very often. So if you see that, that's, uh, okay. that's what it is. So anyway, I will yeah. start this off, this discussion. I, I mean, I enjoyed it. I mean, I think you've got to have episodes that are just kind of fun and unique. And, um, and, and I was reading over some of the Memory Alpha stuff about it and, and reading how a lot of the actors enjoyed it because they got to do something somewhat different. And um, again, it's another Odo-centric episode in dealing with you know the problem nice. which is great yeah. but i also feel like i have a criticism on our show uh not not directly tied to this episode although there are a couple writing issues i have but i feel like th they keep kind of going to what's kind of safe because they haven't figured out what they really really want to do with dax or with o'brien or with bashir um you know we, we we have armin we have i mean quark's character we have odo and we have kira these kinds of things are kind of getting cemented pretty, pretty strongly Early um, especially on, yeah. with what comes up after this episode uh, in duet, which as, as I predict, I'm going to say it's one of the best episodes of season one. I predict I will say that on our next episode. I think you'll episode. mention Mochi once or twice. I think episode. I might mention Mochi and I will predict this, that Nana is going to give an amazing, amazing quote. So, Ooh, I'm looking forward to I know, right? that one and reading it later. It's a, it's a fabulous quote that she shared with us that I believe she will share with us. I just had, I had a premonition about it. I believe so, she will um, read it to us later so we don't forget. I believe she will. I predict she will. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but, but if you're listening now, you're going to have to tune in to hear what that was all about. Uh, so... I feel like, okay, here we are again in Odo. And, and I have to admit that this episode frustrated me in two places. One, <laughs> the fact that my good friend, Sirach Lofton, did not make appearance in this episode. Although I predict if they did, it would have complicated the episode more. Because you know then what's you would... funny about that? I'm going to jump in later, sure. but I, I thought something very similar to that. But uh, I, okay. I want to jump in on that a okay. little bit. And, and, and they made Dax whimsical. And I was talking to Melissa about this going, you know, at the moment, Dax is my least favorite character, not because of her performance, not because of Terry, but because they haven't done anything with her. They've taken her nowhere. And I feel like the writers are scratching their heads going, I don't know where to go. And I was thinking, what could you do with a Trill, a character that has umpty nine uh, uh, lives behind them? And I was thinking, that sounds so much like a multi-personality individual and i thought wow they really could have explored the impact of the trill uh symbiote um i hope i said that correctly yeah. and the mixture of all these lives coming together and the blurring of lines that must occur especially if it's newly um transplanted into the new host like and ordering on schizophrenic yes or and here's what i connected it to so and I'll try to make this quick because I know I, I, I'm long-winded. When, um, when my first kidney was failing, I was, they changed my medication on me. 
And, and when that happened, I freaked out because there was something in my brain that knew 20 years for 20 years, take your meds, don't lose your kidney, take your meds, don't lose your kidney, take your meds, don't lose your kidney. I followed that religiously. And then they're saying, you don't have to take that med anymore. Take this one. I'm like, oh. and what, what happened to me is I would literally wake up in the middle of the night panicking that I did not take my meds and I couldn't clearly figure out what med it was that I was taking. And I'd go downstairs and I'd look at my cabinet. And as soon as I started to wake up, I go, oh, I did, I did take my meds. That, that psychological phenomenon still happens today. Um, even when I'll, I'll, I'll panic in the middle of the night and I'll jump out of bed and listen, what's going on? I didn't take my meds. I haven't been taking my meds for a week. So I have this psychological issue with, with something like that. And I was thinking, why haven't they explored how, the, how uh, a, symbiotic, uh, a symbiotic host, or that's not the right way to say it, a symbiotic within somebody who's hosting this worm, if you will, has to deal with that psychologically. There's got to be some kind of mix. Now, maybe that comes later in our seasons. I don't know. But it frustrates me because I'm like, here we are with, I love Odo and Renee is amazing. But again, we're still not exploring Dax and it's frustrating me. And then the, again, it sounds like what you're saying. And, and, the, and I hadn't thought of that is they they're exploring all the positives of the situation. None of the negative uh, ramifications of having this symbiote inside of them. Correct. Yeah. And, 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 and there has to be some amount of adjustment, even if it's a time thing. Oh, we all go through this. Maybe there's a medication that helps deal with it. Maybe she didn't take her meds or maybe it had a, a, a it, it's a, it's a danger. It's a, it's an area of danger that, you know, over a, like when I have a transplant, the first, the most important time is literally the closest to the transplant. The first week, the second week, the third week, then they reduce the meds. Then you can go less. And then it's the first month. Then you've made it to three months. You're like, Oh man, you're doing really good. And the percentage of success of that transplant goes higher. The further you go along because they find the adjustment of your meds with, with um, you know, keeping your immune system at a level where your body doesn't reject the kidney and, and you can live with that transplant. So when you go to one year, you're like, you know, now we're at 90% or I, I don't know the exact numbers. And I was thinking they, that could have done that with Dax and they haven't done anything and it's, it's kind of bugging me. So that's my, that's my big, my big note so far on the show. And I was also feeling that with Kira um, but obviously I predict I'm going to really enjoy duet. So, and this was a good cure episode. So. Mm -hmm. Sirach. Yeah. Um, are you done, Aaron? <laughs> I'm sorry. There was a couple of things to explain in that, especially with my transplant. Yeah, you went off on the hinge. You didn't talk about the episode at all. You talked about Dax, but I, I get that. You're right. Point, though. You're right. And I have to, and I have to say that that is true that they're not really giving Dax enough because she does come across really uh, monotone and kind of dull, and I yes. and I don't and I think she's way more than that. I yes. know her, you know, as a person and just as 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 much background as her character has. So yes, I have to agree with that. But I think that's uh, that's aside from what I my my opinion of the episode which i think we'll get back to in our, our next segment <laughs> because i can't i don't want to open up my can of worms yet okay well you know. you're right you're right uh because we're gonna go to a commercial in like 30 seconds um so i'll just make this quick point and then we'll we'll hit that in the next segment was i did consider that this episode is one that could have taken place in the fourth season or sixth season or seventh season and while i was watching it I thought about how different it would have been mm. in, in the fifth uh, season. I'd like Ooh. to talk about that a little later. I, and I agree with that. And that's one of the things that I wanted to bring up. Oh, cool. And, okay. and uh, we, we probably have five seconds. Ira actually mentioned something about that. And that's why he really liked this episode because they made a bold move by making it happen in the first season. Interesting. Because his yeah. argument was you need to really love these characters to have an episode like this. All right. We'll talk uh, about it soon yeah. on the seventh rule. Everybody welcome back to the seventh rule. We are talking some good talk. Good about talk. Matis Persone, <laughs> if we're pronouncing it correctly, directed by Cliff Bull. Um, Sirach Lofton, 
the floor is yours. No, I think uh, Aaron was making a good point about uh, Dax's <laughs> character. But I, to segue from that, um, one of the things that I feel like she wasn't really the centerpiece of this episode. Uh, really. It was more, to me, a Nana episode. And, and Odo. Episode. Yeah. yeah. Odo, yeah. Um, but that was the thing that, that's kind of interesting to me. And I think we were just talking about it off, to, off air. Was that Cisco seems to not have the most storylines when it comes to the bulk of this first season that we've been watching. He started off in the pilot, as you mentioned, Ryan, but um, I haven't seen him be the centerpiece of the story. Not however, at all. however, I have felt his presence throughout all mm -hmm. the episodes, and his his scenes were impactful. So I. I remember his scenes in the in all of the episodes. He's been instrumental in in delegating uh, and pushing the story forward, but not having the story about him, right? Right. You know, right. he's the one going, you know, making all the decisions and and keeping the machine going. And I and and I wonder, Ryan, I have a question for you. In in the other shows like TNG and or Voyager. Is it is it somewhat the opposite, you know, with Picard and Janeway or even Kirk, right? Mm -hmm. Being the centerpiece of the shows and, and pretty much, right? And, and maybe you're, this is what you're arguing too, Sirach, is the character development, meaning, you know, the, the, the being engaged, uh, being the actual focus of the story and, right. where Cisco is not, or Avery is not. And is it because on our show, they know that they've got to build everything else around it to bring the stories in and that's what the difference is. I don't know. Well, um, just kind of taking a quick uh, inventory of the other shows. Um, you know, the original series was definitely a triad of uh, Kirk and Spock and Bones. Mm -hmm. uh, Next Generation was, you know, certainly, you know, and Kirk was the, you know, the main character of course, but then it became very much Kirk and Spock. You know, that's mm -hmm. why people always say Kirk and Spock. Mm -hmm. um, with Next Generation, I feel like there may have been even a stronger focus on individual characters um, from, you know, and I've seen that one the most along with Deep Space Nine as in the most often times. Now, now was Picard getting like center? Was he getting the focal point of episodes, like the main yes. storyline? Yes, he definitely was. With you. And every, and every, he was definitely getting his own episodes, but other characters were also getting full episodes in which Picard may not have even been the second or third person. He may have mm. just been a guy that shows up and gives an order once or twice, or sometimes he was, you know, but it was, it was very varied. Mm. Um, and, you know, there were data-centric episodes, a lot of data-centric episodes. There were some great, you know, Beverly Crusher or Geordi and Data or Worf-centric episodes. Uh, with Voyager, uh, it was definitely Janeway's show, and they, they made it very strongly, more so about her than I think the, the previous two iterations. Hmm. Uh, you know, one thing that stands out for me though, uh, so far in this first season is that uh, Captain or Commander Sisko is really being uh, challenged in subtle ways about his authority, where he has to remind people, are we clear? That's what it's going to happen. Well, uh, usually it's Kira though, right? <laughs> right, usually, but, but even like, even with Odo uh, yes. and and and, and uh, Bashir, there were certain times where he would tell him, "I, you know, this is what I need you to do, and this is I'm the boss here, essentially." But and, it's a, and, it's no, go and ahead, it's I'm sorry. Not, and it, it's not a rude way that he says it, like, "Hey, this I run the show," but uh, he mentions it in his own real subtle, intelligent way. Well, this is a Starfleet vessel, and we're you know, Starfleet still runs, makes all the calls. I am the commander. So, I mean, he reminds you so far in a lot of the episodes, there's been these subtle lines where he's reminding you that I make the call, right? Is it, yeah, isn't that good writing because... It, it's great writing and I love it. And, and uh, this is episode the is the one diversion of that where he's where he's not wanting to make the call and he's not interested, right? <laughs> he must have like, it was clock. so bad. I'm like, oh my God. He's like, ah, do whatever you want. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was wondering, are we going to see that clock in, in future episodes? I don't remember seeing that, but I'll bet you it's going to be somewhere up on a wall or something like that in future mm -hmm. episodes. And we're going to we'll have to pay attention. Yeah. It's, it's and in I love drawers. And on, a, no, on a, Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You oh, love what? Uh, well, 
uh, I had another thought that, that was on what you were saying, but there was, a, I, it made me think of, of the scene at the end when, you know, the Kira and her guard come in and, and uh, Avery and C well, Cisco and O'Brien are there getting out. And then, and then I was watching his performance. It was um, amazing. Avery, and he goes, and he did something like this, goes, wow, like that was, I'm like, ooh, I yeah. love the, the idiosyncratic. Yeah. He was, and he was so calm and direct and threatening. Um, no, and, and even oh. and when uh, when O'Brien was trying to open the airlocks, his hands were like, he was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, he was like, like, ooh, let's go, let's go. Jazz hands, jazz yeah. hands, you know? <laughs> but uh, what I was, I think I remember what I was going to say in the writing sense, the initial conflict is Starfleet coming in. Bajoran is not really wanting them there, but needing them in order to, you know, keep the Cardassians at bay. Um, and so they've, they've subtly played with his, they're probably, I'm assuming they're thinking him there has to build up the trust, you know, has to impose his authority and remind everybody, hey, this is what we're doing. We're all on the same page, right? And keep those cogs working, everything working. And so uh, subtly doing it here and there, they, they truly picked uh, a wonderful actor to do that because he does subtlety so well. So well, it's like, and, 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 he, and he can go intense watching. too. He goes huh? intense. He goes intense too. Uh, there was a yes. scene in this episode where O'Brien's in his quarters, and he starts off very, you know, he's 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 very melancholy, and he's yeah. doing his artwork. But when he, <laughs> but when he, but when he jumps up and gets angry, and he's holding that one thing in his hand, yeah, he's like, I I'll get rid of, I'll get yeah. rid of Kira. Kira. He takes it to like the level where it's like, oh shit, he's about to go kill her right now. Well, what about and, the fight scene? And the fight scene, and mm. and he did the he did the patented Star Trek double action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and my favorite scene, which I think I think should be a clip that they play almost any time that he makes an appearance, is when he says that my name will blaze across the the history books. Oh my god. It, it's oh, great. It's it like gives me it gave me the chills because it's like it actually is true in in a real sense is, to me, you know. And and I feel like that his performance and what he's done as Cisco will blaze across the you know the the trail of history. Well, um, and then Kara's response was 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 almost yeah. But you won't be was right there. But <laughs> you'll be yeah. You'll be dead. He won't be here to see it. <laughs> it's like ooh, wow, fire, yeah. fire, fire, and fire. And and this is another example to me of uh, Nana how good she is. She is so she, like she literally plays the adversary in this in this yes. role to the T. And she's she's just you know evil she's a snake. and she's so snaky and so and, but just so. <laughs> And and believable. She's charming when she needs to be. She's tough when she needs to be. Uh, she gave a, a, she gave Odo uh, one time. You know, Odo. That's why I like you because you can't lie. You can't be. You know, you can't be uh, coerced to to go a certain way. Um, and but then she goes into flirtation mode with Dax. She, yeah. The no. Not, not oh, only yeah. with Dax, but with Odo in that yes. scene. That was she, our first hint of the intendant, right there. Right. Right. Yeah. She, good call. She, she gives him the look like, you know, I can, I really can count on you. And I, I, you know, I trust you. And she opens up in this kind of, you know, a real sensual personal way, mm -hmm. completely switching up how she initially came in there. So, you know, what, uh, you know, what scene I really liked in that uh, was, was Odo talking to Bashir later on when uh, Odo is telling Bashir what he thinks is the issue, what the problem is. And Bashir says, well, that can't be because my judgment hasn't been impaired at all. And Odo, <laughs> yeah, like, Odo stops yeah. for a second and he, he, he says, ah, yeah. well, then it, doesn't it must us. be just the two of us that We're have only two. Exactly. And, and Bashir's and then he, like, oh, you got me. <laughs> hook, line, and singer. He's like, yeah. all right, what do, you, what do you need me to do? I'll do it. And that's, I that's, feel bad because the writers are yeah. like, well, who, who's the one we can pull the wool over? Oh, let's do it. Let's give it to Bashir. <laughs> <laughs> it also showed uh, Odo's intelligence to where he could he could change a channel so quickly and be like, ah, yes, of course, that you're right. Yes, yes. And, now, and, not, and not only that, but this episode shows characters out of character better than we saw the Bashir character episode when he was out of character for that moment right. of, of possession. Yes. So I, I prefer this portrayal <laughs> of not people out of character. <laughs> 
Hey, we're gonna have Sid on here, so maybe he can he can shed some light on on that. Yeah, I, I'm uh, sure he'll laugh about it too. Yeah, hopefully, knowing Sid, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, he'll probably say, "I thought I was done on the show after that." <laughs> <laughs> don't remind me and don't bring it up. Because actually, he was really good in this episode. You he know, was. he was and very. It, everybody was, and um, uh, uh, um, they O'Brien. all. O'Brien, O'Brien was great. Uh, yeah, Colin. Yeah. He was. Yeah, I thought Colin, Colin was like, he, he, he turned into this conniving guy who was really intelligent and, and it's, com- it's different than how he comes across usually as like this irritated, I don't want to be here type of person. See, and, and with Dax, I feel, I feel again, they kind of wasted another moment. They made her um, whimsical. Whimsical. You know? and, and instead, what if, what if like she became sinister, which is why she joined you know, yeah. like, like almost like a past one of her other lives uh, from the trill c- came out, you know, that because that she's baby. normally slightly whimsical. <laughs> so it's not, it's not, it's not an absurdity for her yes. to then go to whimsical again. Yeah. So it, 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 it wasn't contrary to her character. Really. And if they would have done that, then you might, because, I, well, let me go backwards. It feels like all of these things that came out of them, you start to wonder, is this deep? deep-seated thoughts right and feelings right, right? right. so right. with dax you're like all you're thinking about is the past and nostalgia you know what if there was something a little bit more sinister that you're wondering is that part of her now or was that part of her five lives ago you know what what <laughs> part of her would that have been from you know and and the other thing that wasn't really explained but i guess i could piece it together but when odo's face kind of warps as he's bleeding yeah they, they they don't really explain that exact moment event uh at any point in my I opinion what it was was that 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 virus he was was hitting trying was trying to get in their head and then and then it had problems with odo and odo's body rejected yeah. it. rejected Boy, it don't try to read odo's mind they see it his face so <laughs> <from Star Wars. laughs> no, no and i, I will go oh. ahead I well no you because I think you might talk about this moment. I was going to take it to another issue. Okay, yeah, I was just going to address that. I, I don't think they were because at first I thought they were saying like people are you know, you know going back to their deep seated thoughts or or yeah. Path. But it turned out to not be that. It was it was just that they're receiving telepathically the elements that destroyed that past civilization. So yeah. there was a king or a leader that was just a tinker and a builder and that and so that that went over to cisco and there was distrust and there was you know so they were taking on roles that happened in the past that destroyed that civilization now of course they only said that in half a line and that's how we're, we caught it but yeah that that was the extent of it so that just makes us think well what what was the story with this civilization which they don't really explain but we get it but then i think it would have been stronger if it was deep seated, we we all sometimes have thoughts that we don't act upon, or we know that's not really what I want to go down or believe. You have Kira's distrust of Cisco. I want to take over. You have Cisco's distrust of Kira wanting to take over, but having to build a relationship. You know, um, you you have, and then you have Federation versus Bajoran sides that might have conflicting issues, and you see it in the documentary. On season eight, when Kira came in, I was seeing season eight right there, right? When when they were pointing the phasers, if, if anybody's mm-hmm. out there who watched the documentary. The other issue, the one, well, the, the biggest issue I had with the show, well, there were two. One, you didn't show up. Like, what if you came in and your dad was acting like this? You're like, Odo, some, some, something's going on with my dad. I felt you could have easily have been used in this episode, although maybe you were too young, hence... Back to Ryan's idea of it would have been better as a season five or six episode. But um, but still, I didn't like that you weren't involved. I'm like, where did Jake go? He just vanished. Those yeah, well, yeah. things drive me nuts. But Not only that, but he still, we, he's ready to escape the stage. Yeah, without his son. <laughs> yeah, so you know? Like, yeah. Oh, wait, where are you going? You should have been. Dad! Dad! <laughs> when are you coming back? <laughs> <laughs> we flash forward to the visitor. <laughs> yeah. So the other issue I had is the virus itself. If it affected everyone in ops, well, there were other people in ops that were working also. Two, ops isn't an airtight 
controlled environment. And, and if the Klingon himself, because he was transported in, gave the virus to all of them, then wouldn't they in turn give all the virus to everybody else as they walk through the promenade, they go into wherever it is? All of a sudden, the virus stopped um, moving. And a virus or a bacteria, its whole goal is to survive. It's not just to stay in one host. It's to continue. Um, and I didn't see any change in Quark either uh, in his character. Yeah, I, I didn't see He it. wasn't in ops. Mm -hmm. See, it's only whoever was in ops when yeah. you're the Klingon. But, but if that, the Klingon can the give other. the virus, then why didn't all of them give the virus outside? Uh, 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 okay, I see what you're but saying. That brings so up the, the other point, which is if just the, the six or seven or ten of them got the virus, what happened with all the other officers? Why were they just following Kira and exactly. following whomever? Why weren't they saying, hey, dude, uh, you're kind of going against the rule. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, O'Brien O'Brien doesn't even really have rank. And so there are <laughs> lieutenants out there. Yeah. Like, oh, Brian, you're taking yeah. over, huh? Well, why don't you just go clean something and uh, we'll keep. Uh, and what about the Majorans following Kira? Like, That's exactly I like what Cisco. I'm Why are we attacking him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me a raise. <laughs> he had something, right? So, uh, so I those those were kind of as fun as the episode was. Those those kind that kind of took me out of the episode. I'm like, uh, you know, and I was waiting for a fire flame down a hallway. That didn't happen. So I was very disappointed. You know, and uh, the, the thing is that I was thinking if this was done in the fifth or sixth or seventh episode or something, I did kind of consider because the, uh, the, the, the later seasons had a more expanded uh, cast. So I was thinking how Jake and Nog would be affected. I pictured Nog would probably be O'Brien's like muscle, like his guard. You know, when he's sitting there, you know, in the, in the captain's seat, there'd probably be Nog would be like, you know, holding his phaser and kind of being his guard there. Some, you know, that kind of role, you know, where Jake would be trying to talk reason into Nog, but then at the same time kind of taking his dad's side or, you know, like there, you know, there are other characters and Worf, you know, would Worf probably take the side of the Bajorans maybe? Cause you know, he's a little bit at odds. I don't know, but it was just kind of an interesting thought right. to figure you know when when they had a cast of 10 or 12 mm -hmm. or 13 well that's why i think it's weird to, for them to do it so early and that was something we brought up like the, when they could have brought it up and you mentioned ira said that well, he i can he, read that yeah that that the risk was to do it early to me it was like the reason i think they should have done it later is because they're still developing their cast and they're you know they're still developing yeah. these characters and and I, I think I just now have started to get a sense of Bashir, for example, who started to find himself mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a character. And mm -hmm. I've just started to really get attached to how O'Brien, for example, is, has, has found himself. And so there's a lot of characters that are just now settling into what we've defined now in the first season. And now, boom, they're switching it all over again and playing, mm. you know, playing around with it. And that's why I felt this is a little bit early for it. We're not so well established with these characters that it would be obvious that people are acting a certain way. Because I actually believe Kira was uh, plotting, you know? It, like, it, it, it could possibly be something she was wanting to do. Because well, we don't know, I, we don't know enough about her, right? Yeah. So she's this rebel. Per so I would say, okay, it's possible that she would try right. to say, you know what, I'm done with the Federation here. They're telling us what to do, and I, and I keep having to, you know, answer those people. Ira said, um, and reading this from the uh, Memory Alpha, uh, he said uh, it, it was a favorite of Ira's who feel who felt it was a bold move to do a show like this so early in the series. He says it was a third season show, as you've articulated, both of you, um, <clears throat> that we had the nerve to do it in the first season. Anybody, anybody else would say you need to know the characters better mm -hmm. before you twist them like this. But yeah. seeing Kira come on to Dax, I don't care if it's first or third season, <laughs> people are going to be interested in that. <laughs> uh, you know what? And, and I wish that Dax was more, I don't know, more receptive, I guess, to it. You know, yeah. I didn't, I, she was too I whimsical. Didn't, too whimsical about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. It would have been more it interesting. Was, it, it was just like Bashir trying to get it. Yeah. You know, get at her. It was the same kind of, oh, yeah, you're silly, silly you. Silly Kira. 
You're so cute. You're so cute. Yeah, um, instead of like, I mean, if she's going to play it opposite, then she could have been totally receptive and said, meet me at my quarters later. I, I want to talk to you in private. And, you know? and they could have solved your problem, you know, Jake Sisko. At the very, very beginning, they could have, you know, Sisko could have walked you to an airlock with me going, enjoy your field trip. I'll see you when you come back. You know, something like that. That simple. One scene where you go, all right, see you, and you walk off. Now you're off the station, so whatever happens, it doesn't it doesn't have to pertain to you or or him being a father to you. You know what right. I mean? Because um, I totally would have noticed him sitting there making a call. yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, aren't you supposed to be somewhere right now? Who's, who's flying? Who's, who's running this shit? Yeah. And I thought, why are they having him a clock? He should be playing with a baseball. He should be like dressing up, you know. They, but maybe they haven't established that baseball is going to be such a big thing for Cisco as it becomes. Or because maybe the the person that oh, that's true he based right. off yeah. of was a yeah. clock builder was fascinated with time or something like that. That's where that personality trait came from temporarily. Yeah. There so, was one other thing that I thought was interesting is uh, Kira oh, kept Airlock. saying that they had dolomite. On, on board the Belorian yeah. ship. And I was like, isn't Dolomite the name of a pimp like from the 70s? I thought I recognized that too. And yes, I believe that's what it is. <laughs> so okay. They've got Dolomite. They're like, we'll release them. <laughs> <some." laughs> they got Iceberg Slim. You guys correct me if I'm you wrong. Huggy here, Bear, but... man. Huggy Bear's in there. <laughs> Huggy Bear. Uh, at the end, Odo's major plan was to get them all in one space in the cargo bay yeah. and then do something where the virus leaves them and then open the airlock so the virus goes out to space. Something right? ionic, something with ionic. Okay, yeah, so he opened airlock. the airlock yeah. with them in the cargo bay and all they had to do was hold on to something. That's Is that right? It. Do I yeah, have that right? right? I'm yeah. sorry, but yeah. that would not happen. Isn't that physically <laughs> impossible? Improbable. Uh, it's improbable. <laughs> I think it's impossible. Well, no, you know, there's an air curtain that's there at the same rate that it leaves. So there's was, still oxygen. I was more, <laughs> I was more impacted. <laughs> the, 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 the aspect of that scene that killed me the most was the fact that uh, he got there right in time. Some telepathic yeah. thought bubble went out the airlock and dispersed like it was a, yeah. like it was a thing. Like, like, yeah. like I have a thought, and it's <laughs> yeah. that thought's gonna just disappear forever and disperse. Yeah, there uh, goes that telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, oh, you let Season it out. Six. Season six, Kara looks out the window. <laughs> hey, there's the telepathy. It's still out there. <laughs> Did somebody fart? No, I just released my telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> I want Golden Con to go. I think telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's uh, that was that was a simple solution. And when they showed it from the side, you see Kira's back is to the airlock, and I'm like, why would she stand there if she knew the door was about <laughs> Like she'd be bunkered behind something, or you know. And I love so, I love how there's always that conversation, you know, before you kill somebody, right? Yeah, when, when and, and Odo's like, and right. Yeah. Ah, and then she goes, Odo! Oh, no. I'm like, oh my God, he would be dead. Good thing that airlock door didn't take time opening or something, you know? He just came out of nowhere at the exact moment. But, yeah. you know, those are, that's the magic of television. You know, they can't, they, they don't have enough time to sit there and, and show it in real time. But I, I, <laughs> I, I just, I thought it was pretty interesting. You know, I also thought of the idea that the budget runs down as, yeah, the, season the, end. as yeah. the season progresses. And so I, I was thinking of that too. They probably blew a lot of money in the pilot episodes. And these They're like, can we afford fans at least? And the, <laughs> the, fans, yeah, the fans blowing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I actually was kind of thinking that Odo and Quark would have had to work together. Like, I still feel like the threat, it, 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 yeah. it was there, but, you know, I don't know. It would have been neat to see Odo and Quark come work together to get to save the station in a way. Um, and it was really funny when Quark was watching what happened to Odo. He's like, <laughs> it took him a long time to get over there. <laughs> it did. And then he starts running. Bashir, Bashir. He was like, I'll, I'll take my clothes He just runs first. over. <laughs> yeah. 
Like he's over there dying. He's like, I'll stand here and get my close up for a few minutes. Now well, I'll man, run over there. He should have just pushed him out to the promenade and closed the doors. <laughs> yeah. Nudged him out, out with bar. his foot. Just kind of kicked him out. <laughs> you drunk. You drunk. <laughs> Nothing worse than drunk uh, shifters. <laughs> Change I, I like how neck braces haven't really changed much. Oh, oh my years. God. Was that hysterical? That was a bling, dude. <laughs> Armin played that perfectly. Perfectly. He's one, uh, uh, it was slightly off center, too. Did you notice yeah. that? I want my, I want my, what did he say? I want something. I want my dad. I want Jesus. my, yeah, what did he it say? Something. It was something. It was, it was pretty funny. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as long as we're nitpicking, it, I did have one tiny little thing I noticed. And I had Tell to us, rewind, Ryan. I had to rewind a few times to look at it again. And I know that's very minor, but when uh, Cisco was beating up a Bajoran, uh, the, uh, the stunt man <laughs> that was playing that Bajoran, he didn't, and he kind of goes over the railing, you know? But he did a thing where he got hit, he wiggled a little, <laughs> looked at the railing. And <laughs> it. It like, I went back and watched it like three times. He got hit, he got hit and he went, oh. <laughs> it's a delayed reaction. He, was just, he just had such a uh, good wiggle going that he couldn't stop himself and just wiggled off the. Yeah. He had a wiggle. He it. had a wiggle. Yeah, it was, uh, well, you know, everybody's played out of character, and I, I think they did a good job of that. Um, I don't say it was boring, though. I wasn't bored. No, it was entertaining. It and, was entertaining. Yeah, and, and, and you know, you're going to have those episodes, especially because we haven't hit our serialized season, you know, and, and uh, it was fun. And it was fun to watch all the actors um, have fun in in the different roles that they played you know yeah. and it was it was an enjoyable episode yes i agree yeah i thought it was enjoyable yeah uh and there were just a few standout scenes one is the the the, the speech that uh cisco gives oh. where, where he says his name's gonna blaze throughout history i love that mm. and and I, and I like the little moment it's very small but when they threw their com badges away and he slapped O'Brien and said, "Hey, why are you looking so worried for? You know, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry. We're gonna we're gonna make it. Don't worry. I'm you almost want to have an episode just the two of them. Just the two I'm of so, them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, playing it out. So yeah. I, I, I like. There was a few moments there that I really enjoyed. Yeah, all the jokes aside and all the nitpicking, it was an enjoyable episode. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, it kept us yeah. guessing. It kept moving. Like I thought I knew where it was going, but then they kind of went in different directions. Like the characters themselves mm -hmm. did." Uh, like Dax becoming whimsical, as you put it, and uh, Bashir, I just didn't know what the heck they were doing with Bashir, honestly, but then it all kind of unfolded <laughs> and we figured it out. But uh, we're sadly out of time this week, so uh, if there's a lot more you want to talk about this episode, it's going to have to just go into a different forum or something like that. <laughs> okay. well, we'll, we'll wait till the director come names come back again. We'll have to blog it, about it. Yeah, Mr... What's Bowl. his name? Cliff Bowl. Bowl. Cliff Bowl. Cliff. Done over Cliff forty Bowl. episodes of Star Trek. That's yeah. pretty good stuff. He passed away yeah. though in twenty fourteen. So rest thank in you peace for your work on, on within Star Trek, Mr. Well, we gotta we gotta run right now. Uh, stay tuned for the free for all. And as always, remember the seventh rule, ladies and gentlemen. Hey everybody, and welcome to the seventh rule free for all with your stars Aaron Eisenberg, Sirach Lofton, also. Kat R. King and Heather Jordan. I'm Ryan T. Husk. Today we are going to talk about your mochi. favorite. No, no mochi. <laughs> mochi. Your your favorite movie of all time. Uh, there's. Kat R. King looks very frustrated, so we want to start it with is. her. Go ahead, Kat. <laughs> uh -oh. I hate that question. That's the worst question you can it ask is. a movie. I'm with you, Kat. Person. Um, <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. That's my favorite. And nobody has a comment, apparently. <laughs> yeah, we're like, I don't right. know that movie. <laughs> they left them speechless. They're like, quid, oh, quid pro quo, movie. doctor. Quid pro quo. I got Wait, lines from science. Heather, did you just say you've never heard of that movie? No, I haven't. Okay. It's you've actually a good movie. You've never heard of it? You've Heather's never heard 19. of Silence of the Lambs? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was the actual silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Judging by her silence. The silence of Heather Jordan. The silence of Heather Jordan. <laughs> I mean, I've seen, like, uh, you know, I've heard all the, uh, or I've never seen the full movie, but I've, I've heard of, like, you know. Heard about heard it. The, um, you know, the, the Clarice thing. The quietness of the hyenas. Yes, yes, you're aware <laughs> of it. Which they say it's always wrong. Like, uh, they say it's misquoted. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. all the time. I know that part, but I've never really seen it. Okay, that's fine then. You know, I can't, I can't grow fava beans in my backyard without people quoting that movie. And they go, and some nice Chianti. I'm like, no, just fava beans. Dude. You have to say, <laughs> that's a Chianti, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I feel it's, like, um, Kat, that you beat me up and now you're staring yeah. at me on your kitchen floor. <laughs> and you're about to uh, dismember my body. That's what I, I feel right now. Because I've been playing too much Apex Legends. Yes, I I'm, I'm feel a little intimidated right now. I'm a little nervous looking up at you like that, especially the way you're leaning over. I feel like I'm dead. This is what it would be, be like dead. It reminds me of my favorite movie, which is Goodfellas. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> is that really Perfect. your favorite movie, Ciroc? It's it, it actually is one of my favorite movies. I'm a mafia movie guy. So oh. I think you have to ask why. Of you know, course. If you're yeah, gonna you got, if you want to follow lands, it up, sure. Goodfellas is your favorite. Yeah. I mean, the scene with um, Ray Liotta, that that one long one is, is amazing. But why is Goodfellas your favorite? I like mafia movies. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, okay, I, so, uh, oh. and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so you chose that one, though, over, say, The Godfather. The Godfather 1 or 2, which are very right. highly rated. Uh, I like Godfather, but they're, it's a little bit slow for me. I think oh. Goodfellas has a faster pace, and uh, I feel like there's – is is more going on? I you know so I'm I'm like Goodfellas, Donnie Brasco, Casino, Casino, Casino. I haven't seen Aaron Stone. Those, I've seen amazing. none of those movies. Godfather, Casino, really? Donnie Brasco. No, um, no way, no Zero. way. Wow. Yeah. Casino, Casino is like a. My classic. cousin Vinny is like the best. I like one seen that year one at least. least. <laughs> yeah. Utes, Utes, yeah. <laughs> Utes. What's a Ute? Utes. You know Utes. Youths. No, uh, and and the <laughs> bad and good, and good, good fella, yeah, very bad. Uh, <laughs> good You're fellas, the master uh, of bad jokes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Wait, what that was, was that, Heather? That was a little bit. the for master you. of bad jokes. Wow. <laughs> wow, Heather. You know, Thank I have you. a lot of power on this show for Trek It Turn. <laughs> just I, that, I need I, to. I've been for rooting sure. for you, Heather. You just, you just went down. And, uh, uh, <laughs> you're not you're not pulling high right now, Heather. No, oh, I have uh, to grovel now. Is that it? Now yeah, we have to hear Heather's something. favorite movie so we can trash it. Oh, yeah. okay. Whatever Heather. it is. Please don't say Heather's. Uh, you know what? I, it's hard to really pick one, but I impossible. always go to The Fifth Element. Wow. Yes. Who is the director? Because I'm going to pick a movie that he it's directed dude, also. Right? I don't know who the director oh. is. I've never looked. Did Luc Besson, right? Besson. Mm. Luc Besson. Luc Besson. Luc Besson. Maybe. Uh -huh. I've uh -huh. never looked up who the director was. Like, I didn't pay attention to, like, you know, the director when I was watching it. But just, I watched it. I, I was young. I mean, I was probably in my teens when it came out. So, way. you know. Mila Jehovich. Oh, uh, you know, I, I Jehovah yeah, Jehovah witness. <laughs> I watched a lot of her films because of her in um, The Fifth Element. So, you know, I started watching. Evil. Yeah, I watched the all the Resident Evils. Evils. Um, you know, and, and I think that she's a really good actress. And I think that she's like, you know, a good person from what I can tell. Like, she seems to have a good, um, you know, presence, like you know, out in as a celebrity. Yeah, but you're bearing the lead here. Uh, Smokey was in that movie, right? Smokey? No, Bruce, 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 Bruce Willis. Yeah, Bruce and, yeah. Willis and, and Bruce uh, Tucker. Yeah. Bruce Tucker. Yeah. Yeah. Smokey, man. From Friday. Um, oh, sorry, you know yeah, that, that she did, oh. has an album. She did a, a really interesting uh, album, Mila. It's oh, called she? The Great The Great Divine, I believe. Um, you should check it out. Yeah, I'm not sure if I've heard her music. I don't think you have, because I don't think you, I don't think you're on it there with me. Aaron, what's your favorite movie, by the way? I don't have a favorite. There's too many movies to say a favorite, but I will say one that came to my mind first. Okay. 
uh, but it's not necessarily my favorite. I think you should say genre, but again, a Luc Besson movie. I This was a movie that I just was really wowed by when I first saw it. Um, and it's a French film. It's called La Femme Nikita. Mm -hmm. And um, the actress in it was phenomenal. And then the, there was a, um, not necessarily a part two, but there was a second oh. one and it was called um, The Professional. The Professional. Yeah, I love oh, that movie. Cool. And then there was a, a French Portman. version called Leon, but I really liked The Professional with. Um, um, Natalie was, Portman, John Renault. Yes, when she was really young. Um, but oh. La Femme Nikita was one of, was one of my favorite favorite movies I used to have the poster I thought the poster was so cool because there was this scene with the the lead actress who I haven't seen her in a long time um now I, I and I'm blanking on her name Jehovah's uh, no no it wasn't her <laughs> but nice try although Jehovah's Jehovah how do you pronounce her last name she was married to Luc Besson for a period of time did you know that Luc Besson Luc Besson um the yeah. actress <laughs> uh what is um oh my gosh what oh that's the tv show i hate with the tv there was also a tv <laughs> show on la femme nikita yeah um, the movie yeah on imdb um there was an adult film as well named la femme nikita. and Paralog. and i don't what think it about <laughs> <name. laughs> a little cat named nikita Oh uh, no, it's about an assassin. But hey, you oh, know, okay. you guys make your cat jokes. That's fine. All right. Never um, mind. But there was a scene where I thought, as an actor, and watching her in that scene, I just thought was phenomenal. And it was she was in the kitchen, and she was her back was to like this wall, and every and all the the bad guys were coming after from all sides, and she just there was this choice, this moment where she was just going to give up and throw it all down, or she it was fl fight or flight. And she chose fight and, um, or actually she chose flight, but she didn't give up and she just went for it. And it was just such a, I was just so wowed by her performance. So that was one of my, cool. that's one of my favorite movies. Kat you know, is with me on that. You know that movie, Kat? Kat is silent. <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. Kat is, is showing us a piece of Silence of the Lambs. We can't hear you, Kat. You there know, you because of, uh, because of Sirach's Ciroc, cat joke, uh, I predict next week, our free for all will have something to do with cats and dogs. I this just no, think <laughs> Heather, you're not I you. No, I know them. what you're gonna say, Heather, but I think I know what Heather's gonna say too. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna give I two, predict. I'm gonna give two movies because oh, no. uh, oh, you come on, you didn't give us you're that allowed idea. to give two movies. No, I didn't you didn't say that. We didn't say not. I'm not I'm not <laughs> keeping score. <laughs> And because I can't decide, like, Aaron, around. you expect me to decide on just one Thank movie? It's a question, man. <laughs> so I'm going to say <laughs> The Devil's Rejects by Rob Zombie, <laughs> Rob Zombie's written and directed, which is just mind-blowing. I've written, I've actually written papers on that movie. Oh, wow. Uh, what I think is maybe the one of the best movies I've ever seen and possibly my favorite is Sling Blade, Billy Bob Thornton's mm -hmm. Sling Blade. Mm, yep. <laughs> French fried potatoes. That's right. That's right. Uh-huh. I have to say That's right. I think it's bad. I think a bad Santa. Like, oh, I never think <laughs> that was great, Aaron. That was awesome. <laughs> I really thought I saw Billy Bob for a second. Quench <laughs> <laughs> your eyes a bit. Just <laughs> your eyes. I thought it was the one, who, the one who was dating Angelina Jolie, Billy Bob, with a little with a little blood right here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> fucking right. That's it. Uh, name, I think the best right. the right. other movie I equate him with. Aaron, you saw the movie Sling Blade? Yeah, a long Not time ago. I, I, <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> you do your impression of John Ritter's character. I, I don't remember. I just remember. Oh, man. I was right. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew McConaughey will sound like in like thirty. I think Kat's the only one besides me that saw The Devil's Rejects. Yeah, I love it. It kind of sounds familiar, but I can't place it. I never saw it. I never oh, saw yeah, it. It was in that one, though, Heather. It was a sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses. And actually, they're making the next, the third movie right now called uh, Free One Last Free Dead Guy. Or Free the Three or something like that. And Man <laughs> Alive, it looks awesome. Oh, you're killing it, Eric. I love it. 
You need a fire. We need a fire emoji for him. He's on fire. I asked 100, man. I don't know. Ryan killed it in the show we just did, though. <laughs> that, he did. He did. He did. He did. He did. They call me killer. You know, I auditioned for Bad Santa. <laughs> did you? I did. Uh, I auditioned for it for the, for the, the role of the elf. His elf. Yeah. No, for the elf. And the director, uh, I, I had a really good audition. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to work with Bear Bob Thornton. <laughs> and, um, and I was really excited. And it was really funny. It was really funny. And I nailed it in the audition. And the director sits back. And he goes, man. And he's thinking. And I'm like, oh, my God, come on, man. Just hire me, you know? Give me the That means job. he already liked somebody. He already had somebody in mind. And you were making him reassess. Yes, a little bit. And he, and he, he was struggling. He goes, he goes, you're not a little person. I, he goes, I don't know if this will be funny. And he was seriously trying to wonder if, if I played the role, would it still be funny? Um, and I'm in my mind going, yes, it's going to be funny. <laughs> you know but you know you got to be kind of cool just got to let it let him go through the, his mental gymnastics and obviously i didn't get it and and the other actor was great he was hysterical but um but i didn't get it but i was like ah oh, so close and anyway but that's the moment when you know as an actor you're supposed to dig down deep and do something ridiculous at that moment, you were supposed to jump on his table and piss on his drawers. <laughs> I, I could have. I could have made that choice, or I could have done my sling blade impression. That might have. That might. That might have pushed him over. <laughs> that would have. Well, that sealed it. Yeah. Like, it sounds like a sci-fi <laughs> western kind of crossover. It'll be. It'll be funny. It'll be funny. Trust me. <laughs> there you go. I got the lip. Damn it. Heather, What's Heather do you have a Sling Blade impression? <laughs> no, I don't. No. Kat, do you have a Anthony Hopkins impression? Ooh. Oh, um, what does he say? Um, I ate his, oh, uh, a census uh, taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with a some baba beans and nice Chianti. <laughs> I'm nervous right now. I feel like I'm on your kitchen floor and you're and you're giving me the silence of the lambs right now. <laughs> you might you might well be. <laughs> Do you all know what horror film Terry Farrell was in? No. You don't know this? No. Maybe I maybe I saw it, but I don't remember. I know Tony Todd was Candyman. Yeah, Candyman. Hellraiser. That's in, he was also in Star Trek. Uh, I yes. don't know if I saw the third Hellraiser. Hellraiser 3, Terry Farrell. Sh really? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. Awesome. And one of the, one of the Cenobites the had like Hellraiser. a CD mouth. This <laughs> a CD mouth, where a CD would go in and out, if I remember correctly. I don't remember that. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm not kidding. You think I'm lying? I don't think you're lying. I, 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 don't, I didn't <laughs> I do. see the movie. I don't remember it. <laughs> my time. Oh. It's not part of my memory, man. Well, that means there's two Star Trek actors in Hellraiser. Who's the other one? Wow, Scott, right. ba Scott Bakula. <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> Andy Robinson in the first Hellraiser. Ah, he's in a lot of horror films though, isn't he? Uh, he was also in the Clint Eastwood. No, I'm sorry, not, uh, not Charles Bronson. Dirty Harry. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dirty, Dirty Harry. Harry. Dirty Harry Bronson. Dirty, Dirty Harry. Dirty yeah, that's Harry. what I just said, oh, yeah. Dirty. But that that was with Clint Eastwood. That was the one with Charles. Oh, Bronson. that's right. I'm thinking of um. <laughs> that's right. I was right the first time. What was I thinking of with Charles Bronson that did something? Death Wish. That's what I was Death thinking. Wish. Of. Death Wish. Yeah. That's right. Clint Eastwood was Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry Balls. Yeah. Bronson was Death Wish. It's, yeah. They need to bring those kind of movies back. What about Chuck Norris, man? Where, where's Chuck? Chuck oh, Norris is making somewhere. ties right now. Okay, all right. He's making tithes. Didn't, my, he used to go to church with my family years ago. No, oh, really? he's making, um, he's I'm backing a, a his moves on Kickstarter. No safe around him. He's I making think. ties on Kickstarter, for real? This is real? Yeah, no, I actually bought some. He's, well, he's not making them, but he's the spokesman. So. Are they made in but, China? Yeah, though? like. It's, <laughs> no, they're not. They're there. made in Texas, baby. Walker, <laughs> Texas Ranger. The, Do you guys have any good. Thing, uh, like, Chuck, Chuck Norris doesn't ties or ties. These are like, you know, ties that tie themselves type of thing. So you guys have any good Chuck Norris jokes? 
No, I just don't want to. Oh, man. We've all heard a dozen no. of them. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. We don't talk about Chuck Norris. No. Norris zombies are. Norris is not my friend. Like no, that. there's so many good Chuck Norris jokes <laughs> out there, and I can't think of them on the You're starting screen. to sound like Bob Dole. Bob, yeah, you got it. Yeah. Do it again, Aaron. Let's say Aaron, Bob Dole. I'm done. I'm done. I've done my, my bad impressions. <laughs> no, do your Billy Bob Thornton impression. Billy, no, no, don't Billy, leave me alone, you boys. You leave me alone. It's Billy Aaron, Bob Dole. Bob Dole. Don't leave me alone. Stop, stop Billy making Bob Dole. Me. Don't make me mad. <laughs> Put a pen in your head or a pencil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh man! I bet he could do a good Ross Perot impression too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think so. Ross Perot. I think so. Uh, well, um, I found some Chuck Norris jokes for you if you want some. All right, give, give us a release. Give us, one yes. Show. Yes. give us a couple to end the show. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Look, Kat looks like she just made a mistake and cut out my right <laughs> eye. Let me oh, see. shoot. What did I do? <laughs> there are no steroids in baseball, just players Chuck Norris has breathed on. <laughs> Oof. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Some of these are so bad. Mm. Chuck Norris uses them. ribbed condoms inside out so he gets the pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> It's not even funny. I don't know why we're all laughing at it. The absurd, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good one. The in an one. average living room, there are 1,242 objects Chuck Norris could use to kill you, including the room itself. <laughs> all right. Interesting. I think there's one where like when oh, Chuck okay. Norris does a push-up, the earth moves instead of him. I actually I like that. Um, Chuck Norris doesn't check under the bed at night for monsters. Monsters check under their beds at night for yeah, Chuck Norris. Yeah, that's a Chuck Norris joke. <laughs> we should end on that one. That was, that was, that was enjoyable. All Time all waits for no man, <laughs> unless that man is Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you get any time crystals, Aaron? Yeah. No, no, but I have, I, 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 I have all out. Yeah, all right. we got we 30 to, we seconds. Go I got a time 30. crystal that's going to go back 30 show. seconds. Yeah, we got to. <laughs> no, we're I got gonna, no time crystals. We're going to have better Chuck Norris jokes in, in two free-for-alls from now. I promise. <laughs> yeah. It's a guarantee. Right. Hey, what's going to happen in the next one, Ryan? Uh, who knows? Anything can happen. You never Anything know. Anything could I happen. Predict, I predict you're going to find out <laughs> what my favorite mochi will be. All right, so on that note, <laughs> thank you as always to Aaron Eisenberg, Sarah Clark, uh, Russ Haslidge, Kat R. King, Heather Jordan, I'm Jordan, I'm so sorry. Jordan, Jordan? Butcher, the, you butcher my name. I said Jordan, I think. Oh. <laughs> Heather Jordan. I know. There yeah. we go, I nailed it for you. Good <laughs> job, you, good I job. It for you. I already stopped recording. <laughs> awesome. Just kidding, I did. All right, thank you very much. Hey. We'll see you next time on The Seventh Rule.